so Matt, at this intergenerational conference, I'd like to thank you. I, as a baby boomer, would like to thank you for agreeing to pay for your own university education, for taking on the national debt on behalf of all of us. I'd like to thank you for paying the high rents to my generation that you pay, to thank you for paying so much when you buy houses from us, and for paying our pensions at a level much higher than you will get. And I'd like to thank you for spending a sixth of government expenditure on the National Health Service, which is principally a service to look after me and my generation as we get older. So thank you, Matt, for your intergenerational transfers. If you were in my position, would you stay in the UK? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Definitely not. I mean, I would basically get the hell out of it. Do you still think it's worth people going to university? At the moment, at nine grand a year, you can shop abroad. Because basically, unless you've been to Oxford or Cambridge or Imperial for Science, or maybe LSE, UCL, and one or two of the red bricks perhaps, you're up against it. You really are. So unless you're at one of the top 10 or 15, no. Why are there so few jobs to go around for young people? Many years ago, in the 1930s, I think, the economist John Maynard Keynes wrote an essay. It was entitled The Future for, for Our Grandchildren, in which he anticipated that technological advances would mean that people could only work seven or ten hours a week and spend the rest of their time on leisure. We've had the technological advances, what we haven't done is rethink labour. So people are still working 40 hour weeks, or longer than 40 hour weeks, rather than distributing labour across more people. I'm just absolutely boggled with some of the things that are going on in the job market. Zero hours contracts. And, you know, like, I've been in business. What strikes me is that where the hell have all the ethics gone? And I know the answer to that is, to all intents and purposes, they're completely sidelined out of it. Why can't people like me afford to buy a house? Why can't you afford to buy a house? I wish I had an explanation for that. The whole house market has been geared towards winning votes from a certain group of people. For example, council houses were given away given away almost very cheaply. That'll never happen again. That's a capital base that's been given away. That has also, of course, reduced the amount of houses available for rent, which is further priced house rises up. That's one of the big reasons for the reason you can't buy a house. Because it was always considered a good thing that house prices went up. You know, it was the thing to invest in. We we're very much encouraged to do so, even, even by the tax. Now we realise, of course, that someone actually has to pay for this huge uplift of value, and that's the next generation. Um, of course, it's greatly concerning to the people of my generation too, because we have now have children who just can't get into the to the housing market. There are not enough houses because we fail to build enough stock at the time, and that's inflated the house prices. There's not enough money because um, we largely built up an economy at least in this country, built on optimistic promises, uh, partly based on an inflated house price bubble. And both of those things were bad mistakes, and both of them have left you in this situation. And finally, what would you do if you were in my position? Well, I mean, it's easy to give advice, but if I were in your position, I think I would start from the thought that things have to be different, and that your generation is particularly unlucky in that that realization has come now. They have to be different in two important respects. Um, globally, but now, uh, the economic system needs rethinking. Perhaps much more importantly, in terms of climate change, the world system needs rethinking. And your generation is really going to have to take it on its shoulders to change the system so that the climate is sustainable for the future. I'm just going to ask Matt, do you vote? Do I vote? Yeah. Well, I haven't. But I wasn't, I wasn't 18 in 2010. Young people's votes don't count because young people's votes don't comment. It's actually a, quite a valid point in that if, for example, they had um, compulsory voting, which until today I really thought was a bit of an oddball thing to do, then politicians, and particularly the pollsters in the new style of politics who decide the policies that should be put forward, would suddenly think, gosh, we better put some policies forward for young people and stick to them because these guys vote.